Welcome to another Pet Radio podcast on PetRadioShow.com. Today we're talking to Colleen Demling about what to do when your dog is lunging at every dog it sees and every person that walks up to him. How do you fix this behavior? Stick around. You'll find out. With me is dog trainer extraordinaire Colleen Demling. Well, with all the holidays and everything, I'm sure you've been keeping real busy. We are. There's a lot of clients that try to get their pups in shape before the family comes over and the holiday decorations come out and things, so (laughs) the holidays can remain festive for both the family and Fido. Well, guess what? That's what I'm going to ask you about today. (laughs) Oh, wonderful. Well, with Christmas and New Year's around the corner... Yeah, uh, you know, Christmas is what seven days away now, or something like that. It's uh, I think it, so. it's crazy. Amazing. It's amazing how quickly it always seems to to come upon you. I mean, it's it just it seems like I, I just had my Thanksgiving dinner not too long ago. I mean, I <laughs> where is the time? Going? I can remember the summer. It felt like it was June just a few <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> so with all this going on, is there? And not much time left. Is there anything I can do to keep Buster, good old Buster boy, uh, from jumping up on every single person who comes into my house? Uh, or, or is there just not enough time to uh, to change this behavior between now and Christmas and New Year's? <laughs> It's a little short in time because, you know, it's, it's just like anything. We all, it's like trying to learn tennis in a week to play in a match. You know, we, we can do the best we can, but it probably won't be our stellar performance. But there are a couple things we can do. One, I would make sure that he gets out for plenty of exercise before the guests come over because a tired dog is a happy dog and less likely to run to the door and have all this extra energy to jump on guests. Um, two, and hoping your guests are all very dog-friendly, Tell everyone to totally ignore Buster when they walk in the door. Because normally what happens is the dog goes to the door, everyone says hello to the dog and gets excited. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so, oh, hi, cutie, whatever. And then the dog jumps and we get mad. Yes. Um, Third, and what works phenomenal, and this is something you can do in the next couple days and practice, is I like to put a little Tupperware of treats outside the front door and instruct all the guests to take just a few and as soon as you open the door, they're to throw the treats on the ground. And what this does, especially if Buster gets to practice with you beforehand, is he learns when I see a guest, look down on the ground to see what they dropped. And if he looks down on the ground to see what they dropped, he can't jump. See, see, see Buster, <laughs> Buster kind of has the opposite reaction. If he sees somebody with a treat in his hand, he immediately starts jumping up and down, uh, and then he'll go into his begging stance where he gets up on his hind <laughs> legs. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, then he'll start jump, jumping up towards the person's face again. So, uh, <laughs> With the treat thrown on the ground. So Buster's not going to want to jump up because the treat is going down. I see. And so okay. that's what you want to teach them with, like, you know, you and family over the next couple of days is – when someone comes in, treats aren't handed out of the hand. They're actually tossed down on the ground. Because what we don't want to do is your friend, your dog's being friendly in these situations. And since the time's so short, if you do really heavy correction, you almost mm-hmm. can make him afraid of people coming in the house or him thinking that people coming in the house is wrong. And so that's mm-hmm. where the treats come in. In addition, what you can do is a lot of times if a dog jumps, um, you can take a few shuffle steps into him. So just step, step, step into his face. And what that will do is it's hard, two things. One, he'll learn in dog language that you don't want him invading your space. It's very clear for him. And two, if he's trying to get out of your way because you're moving into him, he can't jump. Mm. And then also, finally, just separate him, put him on leash, tie him to something near the door so guests can come in without him having to jump, wait till everyone calms, and then let him off the leash. Oh, that's interesting. I, I, I know, uh, just so I wouldn't have to deal with it, like when the UPS guy comes to my door or something, I, 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 w- I would just uh, take him and put him in the bedroom and close the door until after I was done with the person at the door, rather than having to deal with him uh, running outside the door to jump on the person and then come back in and be jumping up and down and be all excited and so forth. So, 
So totally, like, and that's where that's where the, where the tying, like especially because again, it's short time frame, tying him to like a banister or a table in the entryway because he still gets to see people. If you isolate him into the room, he never even gets that experience. But mm-hmm. if he's tied to some place where he can still say say hi, get excited, but not actually reach the person, then he's not going to be able to jump on them or run out the door. But that's additionally where if you can get people on board, the people come in and toss treats down will really help. Um, another tip is most dogs get excited as soon as the doorbell rings. Yes. Even before <laughs> knowing or, or, there's someone at the other side of the door. <laughs> or, or knocking, you know, a knock on the door, the doorbell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that. The buster goes ballistic. So. <laughs> so if that happens five, six, eight times a day and no one's there, the doorbell mm-hmm. loses its mystique. Because right now doorbell or knock at the door equals stranger. Strangers are fun, but if doorbell well, but, but, is, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I was just saying, but if doorbell, if you just open the door and like ring the doorbell, open the door, ring the doorbell, if the doorbell starts to mean it's just dad, then it's not going to be as exciting. Well, it, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that's what I, I, I've never been able to understand why. Uh, I, I mean, how he can differentiate between knowing that it's me knock, knocking on the door and someone else because I try to fool him sometimes. Uh, I, I, I've, you know, I, I've been out and I come up to the door. He, he's not looking out the window or anything. So, so I'll make some noise and knock on the door to see if he'll bark. And he's completely quiet. And, and I, I unlock the door, I open the door and he's just there looking up at me with his tail wagging. <laughs> but if it's, but if it's someone, if someone else coming up and knocks on the door, uh, whether I'm home or not, I, if, if I was outside and it wasn't me and someone else came up and knocked on the door, somehow he would still know that it wasn't me and he'd be going ballistic. So it's, well, it's, they, can I, hear, they can hear footsteps. They hear str- like the stride, the way you walk. Sometimes they can even get scents under the door. I mean, you've got to remember that the dog's sense of smell is so intense. Like think of the things we use them for. We're now using them to detect cancer cells. We're using, you can, um, they're using them in jails to smell plastic off of cell phones in a mm. jail environment. So if they can pick up that type of scent, then it's very likely he could smell you coming as well as hearing because we all kind of have a certain sort of walk, you know, or a way that our footfall is. And so he could be picking up on that pattern as well. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. So my, my dog's not that special. He's not psychic or <laughs> Well, and also right. too, just to keep in, in into mind for the holidays as well is that with dinner and with people coming over and normally there's chocolate cakes and there's tinsel and there's ornaments and things like that. So just beyond people coming in the front door, also really make sure that the dog stays safe because a lot of things we have around the holidays can be okay to not invite your dog to the party. It's okay to um, put him in daycare, to have a dog walker, to put him in a bedroom with a really mm-hmm. yummy bone and maybe the radio up so they feel comfortable and not even invite them to the party. And they are not going to care. They're not going to have their feelings hurt. Yeah. Well, except that if I have him in a closed, inside a closed room, and he hears me outside or hears other people, he starts whining because he wants to come out. But, 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 yeah, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. If it's a very extra special yummy bone or something, a lot of times that will keep him distracted. It's again something you want to think about and prepare because you want the holidays to be fun for everyone. And if Fido gets sick or runs out the door or knocks over Grandma or eats the mm. ham off the table. Yeah. That's not going to make for a very merry Christmas. <laughs> Knocks over the Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. Chaos, Christmas chaos. That's what we're trying to avoid. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, I have another question outside the holiday Christmas realm here, but uh, but I, I I was just thinking about this the other day, and it's an ongoing problem I've had with Buster for years. I mean, ever since he was a puppy. I mean, he's like six years old now. Six or seven, I, I forget. But, um, but but even though it's now winter, and even here in Oregon, it gets pretty cold in the winter time. Uh, you know, I, I still like to take him for walks. And my biggest challenge for the past six years or so is is how reactive he is when we encounter another dog or person while while we're out walking while he's on leash. And you know, it, it can be someone. Uh, uh, Approaching us, you know, you, you know, coming in our direction on the sidewalk uh, with their dog, 
uh, he has actually has the same reaction to either dogs or people. So even if it's someone without a dog, he's going to start lunging at them or and barking and snarling at them and so forth. And he would do the same thing to another dog. And, and how much it, it would escalate would depend on uh, the the uh, stance of the approaching dog and and what their reaction is. Uh, or if the, uh, the stance the the person has when they're walking towards me, if if they're if they're if they have eye contact with my dog, my dog seems to go a little bl- more ballistic. Uh, if the person doesn't even look at my dog, kind of looking in the other direction, it's not paying any attention to my dog. Then my dog, then Buster calms down real quick and he doesn't pay them any mind. But but. Uh, I mean, I've tried various things in the past, and I can never seem to get the hang of it to get him to change his behavior. Is there a, uh, anything that I can do to ma- to make him? Uh, I, I presume it's out of fear that, that this is a fear reaction from him. Uh, but what can so what I? Kind of, what kind of collar is he on? Collar? Do you walk him on a flat collar? Yeah. Do you walk him on a flat collar? Is he on a harness or? Oh, just I don't know. I don't know the difference between all these collars, I guess. But it, it, it's just kind of like a regular leather. A regular normal collar. Yeah, kind of a leather collar with okay. little stud crystal studs on them to make him look Ooh, like, fancy. Look, make him look like he's you know got the thing. You know, he's a lady. <laughs> like he's it. a lady. A lady killer, you know. He's got a little <laughs> bling. He's got some bling, bling. on his collar. That's, I like that's it. That's the word I was, I was trying to think of. Bling, yes. But, but, <laughs> bling, but, like, yes. But, you know, he, he, but then he's got the attitude to go along with it. So <laughs> but, Maybe we need to take away his bling. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, no, it's a great question. It's, it's one we get a lot. What I would recommend off the bat for anyone going through this issue and, you know, with Buster as well, especially since it's been going on for a while, is to get someone local, a certified pet dog trainer at least with a minimal certification to take a look at it hands-on because I can give some general advice and I will, but it's also somewhat like calling a doctor and saying like, I have all these symptoms and I have this infection and it kind of looks like this, but it sort of feels like that. They may be able to give you a best guess of what's going on, but they're really not going to be able to properly diagnose the issue. Is it fear? Is it dominance? Is it territorial aggression? Is it protection? Is it a mixture of both? Um, It could even be some just leash arousal. So there's all these different technical terms which describe the different motivations of why dogs are doing what they're doing, and we need to know why before we can know how to solve it. But well, I, 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 can, some... I, I can tell you he has the same reaction whether he's on leash or off leash. And if he, if he was off leash, there would be serious problems. Cause, uh, <laughs> now, like I'll, I'll tell you one day, I don't know when this was, last year or something, uh, I, I was walking down the street in my neighborhood, uh, and it was on a, su- a sunny afternoon, I was taking him for a walk on kind of a busy street. Now, now sort of side note here, uh, I, I can walk him uh, through a crowd of people uh, on a busy street where there's lots of cars and noise going by, and he's completely undaunted by by the noise of cars and heavy traffic and all this stuff. I kind of desensitized him to that by by walking him out on busy streets since he was a puppy. But if he sees a a person approaching him or a dog approaching him, then then he's got this problem. Now, uh, now, sometime last year, I was out walking him, as I said, on a nice, sunny, warm afternoon. And on the opposite side of the street from me, going in the opposite direction from me, was this guy walking this big, massive pit bull. Uh, and the, as soon as the, the dog, the pit bull, saw Buster... From across the street, he started lunging towards my dog and started to uh, go a little ballistic. Uh, and, and, and and then when Buster saw him, saw this dog reacting that way to him, of course he he returned it back to him. Uh, uh, but I just kept walking, and I was scared to death because. Uh, and it's not that I have anything against pit bulls, uh, but uh, you see any big dog like that uh, uh, lunging towards you and your dog. Naturally, you don't know what's going to happen, and you're going to get a, right. a little nervous. And so I, I was 
try to scare them. The only thing I did was I just kept walking as fast as I could and get them away from them. But, but But I was scared to death that this dog was going to break away from the guy because, I mean, this, this pit bull – was, was was very big, very strong, and 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 this guy was a pretty good sized guy too. I mean, he was a big, you know, kind of burly looking guy, and this dog was just pulling him practically off his feet. Right. And, and, right. And, uh, but, but that's why it, I would it, that's why I would say even more is to get if if the reaction is that like I said I'll give you some quick tips, but the reaction is that bad to get someone hands on close to you to really take a look at it. Um, But what you can do in the meantime with Buster, I would suggest maybe instead of having him on his collar, the leash attached to the collar, looking at possibly getting an easy walk harness. Um, And what the easy walk harness is, it's a harness where the leash attaches in the front of the dog's chest. And so if he really starts to lunge towards something, the tension on the leash will actually turn him around versus now if he really starts to lunge, he can pull against you, he can pull against the leash, he can pull against his neck, which can also long-term cause some neck damage. Um, so that would be step one and number one. Number two, is he food motivated? Does he like treats, cheese, yes. human food? Yes. <laughs> okay. I would find his million-dollar treat, cheese, chicken, Steak, I don't care what it is, but his most amazing treat he ever ever gets to taste, and he only gets it whenever he sees a person or dog on a walk, even if that person's 150 yards away. So the person is going to start to be equated with a good thing versus a bad thing, especially if he's coming from a place of fear, as you as you suspect. Because if he's coming from fear and you get too big on correction, it's similar to a person being afraid of a snake and reacting out of fear and me punching them. Mm. It doesn't really work. It's probably going to make them more afraid of the snake and even more afraid of me. I thought you were going to say, and, and you throw the snake in his face or something. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That's what you do. That even works better. <laughs> yeah. um, so what you can do in those situations, though, if every time the person sees the snake, they get $1,000, and they see the snake and they get $1,000, they're probably going to feel more comfortable with the snake. That's what we're doing with this really high-value food reward. So you get the easy walk harness for better control, the high-value food reward like cheese or chicken um, to help change the association. And the best thing, if he does react, and this is, again, general advice, so I'd have any of your listeners definitely contact someone locally if there's something going on. Um, Either you can take three shuffle steps into him or do an immediate turnaround with a no and walk straight away. Hmm. And both of those tend to correct the dog, let him know the behavior is wrong. So if the pit bull was across the street, you wouldn't keep walking parallel. But if there's a driveway, a parking lot, or whatever, you would try to do a quick no about face 180 degree turn away from the dog or turn hmm. into the, your dog and do a couple little shuffle steps. Both of them are a correction based technique. Um, but it also can kind of just break them out of that there's a dog across the street kind of mentality. Uh, uh. Well, that's interesting. I, I, I haven't had him on a harness since he was about a year old. And, and I I actually started him uh, walking uh, with a harness instead of a collar. Uh, but he would he would chew through every single harness that I bought. Uh, 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 Chew right through the straps of the of the harness, and, and in fact, he even was chewing through leashes, you know, you know, leather leashes or something. So, so uh, for that reason, I, I just went to a chain type of a, a leash, so he couldn't chew through the thing. But, but that was, you know, uh, years that was years ago. ago. So, 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 I, I so would perhaps, give it a shot. Perhaps he's shot. outgrown all. He's outgrown all his puppy chewing or. Something so it wouldn't be an issue now. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, we give it a shot, and they also they do sell the chew um, deterrent that that you can spray, which will help um, him not do that. And also, this harness is something he only wears when walking. So a lot of times, if he's walking and he's that uncomfortable about things in the environment, so he's looking for people and he's looking for dogs, he's going to spend less time with this harness chewing it on the walk because he's going to be looking for other things. And then as soon as you get home, you take the easy walk off. There are different, I mean, there are different types of collars and things like that. 
but that would be one of the easiest routes to go without having a professional getting hand, you know, eyes on of what's actually going on. All right. Thanks, Colleen. <laughs> <laughs>